Welcome to a new update and today it's Saturday morning. We're going to discuss the altcoin portfolio. We're going to discuss the latest news when it comes to the altcoin markets. And we're going to give you an overview on the charts when it comes to altcoins. In the past week, we've seen a relatively volatile market. We've had Ethereum reaching 2.1k and correcting afterwards. We have been seeing that Chainlink has reached almost $9 but has been getting a swift correction. And we have been seeing that the markets are overall relatively volatile as the slightest macroeconomic news is moving the markets. As we also discussed Gary Gensler on past Thursday, we're not going to focus on him today, but we are focusing on altcoins and some other news that have been going around in the markets. Now, there's a different schedule when it comes to the YouTube updates. Every Saturday I'm making an update on my altcoin portfolio. But I'll also be providing you information on the latest news for the altcoin markets. And on Tuesday, I'll be doing a Bitcoin update. On Thursday, there's a macroeconomic update. And on the days that I'm not shooting, we are providing you a trade letter. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three times per week. Completely free latest info on the markets. You can find it in the description beneath. And you can also whitelist yourself for the all-around course that you need to have if you want to get started in crypto. Everything from fundamental analysis, technical analysis, Bitcoin, Ethereum, layer ones, zeros, twos, NFTs, DeFi, portfolio buildup and more will be given to you in approximately two months from now in the new course. Make sure to whitelist yourself if you want to win one of those. Now, when we're looking at the altcoin market, we can definitely argue that the markets have been correcting. Some altcoins have been doing really well. We know that Ethereum has been doing really well when it comes to the updates since Shanghai. But we have been swiftly getting into a correction there too. Chainlink has been doing really well because there is hype about CCIP that's coming around. But it's still not breaking the range high. However, when we're looking at the altcoin portfolio, you can see next to me that we've started with 250 bucks in Chainlink, 200 bucks in Atom. 150 in Curve, $100 in RSR, 200 in Lux, and 100 in RXS. The current standings are that we've got 198 in Chainlink, we've got 170 in Atom, we've got 144 in Lux, we've got 161 in Curve, and 92 in RSR, and 81 in AXS. It is a high risk altcoin portfolio through which you can see that Chainlink is in the minus. That is not because of the fact that the price has been dropping beneath our entry. As a matter of fact, it's still in the plus. But we have been selling portions of it and we have been swapping from Chainlink to Lux slightly. And we have been doing a recent trade, which is the swap from Chainlink towards uh, Curve because Curve is standing up higher than we uh, initially bought it for in terms of value. So we've got more Curve and we've got less Link at this point. Now the balances are quite equal again, so that is good. And you could argue, why are you selling Link to Lux and Link to Curve? That is just to compound the profits or to compound, compound the trades, which means that the bigger assets are always moving first and then the smaller ones are following through. That is the reason why we have been compounding. And if you want to stay tuned on everything that's happening in the markets or in the altcoin portfolio, we've got a dedicated channel in our Discord where you can join and follow real-time updates on the weekly updates on YouTube. You won't find the real-time updates, so you have to join the Discord. At a later point, we are going to focus on everything that's happening in the portfolio and my strategy. But first, we're going to discuss the news. So when we talk about altcoins, there are three topics for this week that we have to discuss. They are not long. It's just a few important factors because the essential part is essentially Gary Gensler with the SEC hearing this week. But when we talk about the SEC hearing, also the CEO of Coinbase said and stated that they are considering an exit to the US amid regulatory uncertainty. And that's the latest information. So why is that? Well, currently the regulatory agencies in the country, specifically the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, uh, one says Ethereum is a security, the other one says Ethereum is a commodity. They've launched an aggressive crackdown on the crypto industry, including um, a Wells notice to Coinbase, threatening the crypto exchange 
uh, with legal actions regarding some of its listed digital assets, its staking service Coinbase Earn, Coinbase Prime, and Coinbase Wallet. So um, the SEC is attacking Coinbase, the CFTC has been attacking CZ, and he says, I think that the US has the potential to be a market, mo important market for crypto, but right now we are not seeing that regulatory clarity that we need. And this is aligning with a lot of people that are saying that the US is falling behind and that other countries are starting to um, have a significant impact or even more. For instance, the hub that is created in Hong Kong. Um, I think in a number of years, if we don't see that regulatory clarity emerge in the US, we may have to consider investing more elsewhere in the world. Also, as reported, Bittrex has announced that it is shutting down U.S. operations due to increasing regulatory pressure and lack of precise regulatory requirements. Bittrex co-founder Richie Lay said in a statement at the time, regulatory requirements are often unclear and enforced without appropriate discussion or input, resulting in an uneven competitive landscape. Operating in the U.S. is no longer feasible. So what is he considering? He's considering the UK over the US. But the point here is that the US is falling behind. So the dependency on the markets for the US is going to be lower as well. Which means that there's a regulatory fight going on at this point. Um, but the US is getting a lower uh, market share through which other factors can be moving the markets. That is the first part. The second one that we have is uh, the recent hype around Arbitrum. It is a layer two, and a layer two is built up on a certain other um, layer one or another protocol, uh, Arbitrum One, which is an Ethereum layer two network. Um, has been starting to get some hype recently. Also, GMX, which is built upon Ethereum and Arbitrum, um, has been getting a ton of interaction and interest lately. And then what do you need to have to actually find whether something is valuable or not? You have to look at the fees. So if there is actually fundamental ground of the project being used. In that sense, if we look at the chart, we can see that Ethereum is on top of the amount of fees. One day fees is uh, a lot, 17 million. When we're looking at the numbers after that, we can see that Bitcoin is placed at number eight. And above that, we've got more fees on Synthetix, SushiSwap, BNB, Uniswap, which is still as number second as the number one DEX, of course. And then in between, we've got GMX and Arbitrum 1, which are still relatively new layer twos, but they are getting a ton of volume there already. So if you want to get into altcoins, I think you should definitely be focusing on Arbitrum 1 and GMX as a potential trading solution for now. So you can trade it heavily as there is uh, a lot of volume in it. But also an investment thesis, um, including all the other airdrops. But Arbitrum is definitely one to stay. Then, when we talk about altcoins, we've got Pepe. And I'm not going to share much about Pepe. Pepe is um, a relatively a meme coin. It is a new cryptocurrency. Um, which is after the meme Pepe the Frog. It's called Pepe, the ticker is Pepe, and was launched on Sunday and has experienced a rapid surge in value, increasing by over 100k in percentage in just five days. It achieved 100 million in trading volumes on Uniswap and reached a market capitalization of 160 million on Wednesday morning. The Pepe website describes the token as the most memeable meme coin in existence and suggests that it's time for Pepe to take over from the dog meme teamed tokens. Could be, as we have seen a big run and it has reached the uh, market cap of 150 million. The only thing I have to add when it comes to these type of projects is to stay safe. People were rushing into Dogecoin in 2021 as well. Make sure to stay safe in terms of allocation towards these things. If something like this gets the hype, then you're usually too late. Um, same goes with AI. We've had a lot of AI hype, but we had to kick, draw down the entire price action. And we now the hype is still there, but the prices are not following through. Same goes for meme coins. They won't, they will correct. They won't stay here, but it's good. Um, for trading perspectives, 
which means that if you want to trade on a day-to-day -day basis or intraday scalps, you can definitely trade those assets. But if you want to hold it for long term, make sure that you're staying relatively conservative because in the end, if this rally is this high, there is always a buyer at the end um, because you have to sell it to another buyer. So stay safe. Don't force yourself into these things if you see it on social media. But what do we see on the markets when it comes to the altcoins? Let's dive into the charts. First thing we have to look at is the Bitcoin dominance. And we can see that the Bitcoin dominance has been consolidating, which means that the Bitcoin dominance is currently still acting inside this range. And we have been testing the resistance in which we clearly see a rejection taking place. So the weekly time frame, we're trending up when it comes to the Bitcoin dominance which implies that once we break through 50%, we can continue towards 61%, which puts some pressure on altcoins as Bitcoin will definitely take off from there. Uh, but we had the Shanghai upgrade. We had a pretty su substantial bounce on Ether. So we have to make sure that there is a case that we're actually going to fall or drop with the Bitcoin dominance instead of having a rally. So when we're looking at the markets even more, the lower time frames for the Bitcoin dominance show a case where we just are uh, swapping the trend from bullish to bearish, which means that the trend is still up, but there is a likelihood that we start to fall around. I was looking at a case where we were going to go towards 52 to 55 percent, um, have a higher high there, but that's just deviation above the range high through which we start to drop down and continue to fall as altcoins can potentially take over from here especially ether probably continues to show strength as the fear is a little bit gone out of the markets now when we're looking at the lower time frames for uh, the dominance part here we can see that we are consolidating we had this rally we've got a bearish divergence which implies that the bitcoin dominance is eager to fall down and uh, if we're going to fall it's going to drop about three to four percent and that as a result is going to suit the markets of course now, when we're looking at the total market cap, we can definitely argue that we're still facing a crucial resistance. We need to break through 1.25 trillion and then we're going to continue this relief. This means that we potentially could have a case of some sideways action before we break upwards because the weekly trend is not uh, done here yet. The weekly trend has not been broken we are still trending up and the question is whether we are going to fulfill that so we are making higher highs higher lows um, and now we are seeking for a higher low based on a weekly time frame and once we do and we test the resistance again there is a likelihood that we're going to break through this one and attack higher levels when we're looking at the daily time frame we can definitely argue that we've potentially got a bearish divergence but I do not see it on the daily time frame here. We do see a case that we're correcting back down to the range where we come from, but that's all because of a resistance where we were acting in. Now, few arguments are to be made that we're continuing the fall, which means that we have been getting into a case of a rally, but we are retesting the previous high, which means that if there are not enough buyers, it seems likely that we're falling behind here reject and continue the correction before we have a bull cycle at the later stage however if you look at previous um, corrections here we've had a run two came all the way back towards the initial level here and then had another bounce back up um, in that case we could be falling towards 1.12 trillion and still continue the upwards run it could put some pain on the markets because we can still fall another four to five percent but it doesn't destroy the entire market structure and there's also not a bearish divergence based on the daily time frame when we're looking on a four hour we might actually be into a support range but based on the daily time frame there is an argument that we're just consolidating before we are continuing when we're looking at the altcoins we are still facing a crucial resistance point as you can see here there is a bullish divergence on the weekly time frame the trend is still up which means that you shouldn't be jumping around to say, hey, we're currently in a downtrend at all. I think we're just consolidating. There's also not a bearish divergence here while we actually have one there. So it's just consolidation before continuation. But in order to do that, we need to hold crucial levels for the markets as a whole. Bitcoin is going to look at a level that we need to sustain on um, 
in that case we need to look at anything between 26.6 to 28k as potential entry zones those need to support itself if we do we can just continue and you know markets take time before they are going to be rallying again when we're looking at ether we have been making a new yearly high we have been taking the liquidity above here at 2k we have actually been rallying towards 2.2 closely 2.14 and based on the weekly time frame we can see the exact same which is we are still trending up even if we have a corrective move all the way towards the level of $1,800, we could argument that we're still trending up and that the rally isn't over. When we're looking at the daily time frame, we can argument the same area. So this gap here is the area where you want to find support, which is here. Um, and then you are also concluding that we're not destroying the trend as a whole yet. But it looks ugly, I agree. It looks less convenient, but there is not a bearish divergence here either. When we're looking at ETH against Bitcoin, we can definitely argue that ETH against Bitcoin is ready for a breakout one way or the other. Many highs here. The trend has been down for Shanghai. Um, the lots of fear as well for a potential case of weakness, which means that the low was Shanghai. Since then we are consolidating and the assumption is that we're going to crack this high and continue the rally which means also that Bitcoin is close to a potential support and then the altcoins can start bouncing off again. Indices are not doing bad. Uh, DXY falls down, yields are falling down, hence why we could be seeing some serious strength coming in from altcoins, but we need to hold crucial areas. Crucial level for Ethereum is that we need to hold this previous low. If we don't, then 5.65,000 uh, is going to be uh, uh, 56,000. Is going to be uh, an issue here if we lose that i think we're going to test lower levels but for now ethereum against bitcoin is doing pretty well just consolidating and waiting for a breakout above this region here so what are we looking at with the altcoin portfolio that's what we will be discussing next when we're talking about the altcoin portfolio you can see the entire sizes here for the portfolio right so you can see that chainlink is currently valued at around 200 bucks Atom 170, Curve 162, etc, etc. So the value is 851. You can basically say that the, the challenge started from around 850 bucks as well. Um, instead of 1K, as essentially I've just bought and then just held on to it and didn't really give any update. So let's just make the challenge from 850 to 10K instead. So what we're currently seeing is this valuation. So what we're going to spot trade is on BitGet. You can see the trades that I have, and you can also see that I've got an order for RSR. I'm going to quickly remove that overall. So what have we been doing? Um, we have been trading a few pairs here. First of all, Chainlink, we have been doing a few trades. We've got another sell for 9.29 here for Chainlink, which I'll be quickly erasing at this point and modify at a later stage. What do we see here more? We have been selling Chainlink and 782 during the run up to rebalance the portfolio. I've been stating that in the previous updates that I had to sell a little bit. Then we have sold four pieces at 864, which was during the run up. Then I started uh, to rebuy into Curve at this point. At that point, of course, you would be better off by just swapping to USDT. Um, but I stated that I would like to um, swing trade most of the portfolio just so I took profits, swapped it to the curve and got a little bit loss on that. Now when we go towards the order pairs, for looks for instance, you can see the order history in which we were buying back at 16 cents. Price came down into the range of interest. If we're going to look at the, the charts in a little bit, you can argument that we're back in two areas of uh, support for looks. It's a small altcoin. That's why the, the beta is relatively high and the variance of the portfolio will be quite high too, which means that if it starts to bounce back up, you're probably going to have relatively high swings and therefore rebalancing your portfolio is super important. Now, when we go towards curve, you can also see that I've been rebuying at $1.10. Uh, and $1.11 to actually get myself into the position that I want to get into uh, or $1.10 actually I've been buying um, the position that I've been selling with Chainlink 
um, to be able to accumulate more to compound my profits on the assets and now i'm just sticking to holding the actual positions you also saw a different order which is from rsr uh, which I've got here at a price that is way higher than what we are seeing here So I'll just quickly remove that as well to uh, avoid any um, other parts that are making you confusing So when we look at looks um, The point here is that we're still uh, accumulating So I mentioned before if we get into this range, I think you are looking for a position too long overall So that's what we're looking at here. I think that as long as we sweep the low and reclaim after that, I think I want to stick to my swing altcoin positions. Of course, the markets are starting to look a little bit more weak, so we can still have another correction of Bitcoin. But the trend remains up. And when we're looking at a case of altcoins against Bitcoin, we can also argument that we have been mentioning these bullish divergences all around the markets, which means that the trends are usually going to switch. Here's an example for Chainlink. Chainlink against Bitcoin has been making this bullish divergence, ran towards resistance, rejected, and is now consolidating. That is just normal price action. That's also price action eager to continue the movement, but it should not be making a new lower low because then the entire bullish divergence is invalidated. In that case, if we consolidate here and start to break to the 2900 sets, this rally is going to continue and continue to last even more. We're looking at something like AVAX against Bitcoin. Same can be stated. We are entirely into support ranges for the altcoins and they are quickly going to consolidate here and then hopefully recover and continue. This also is the same when you're going to look for altcoins against Ether. So for altcoins against Ether, you are measuring the altcoin against the valuation of Ethereum. Ethereum is currently consolidating, started to show a little bit of strength and in order to altcoins to start moving, altcoins need to break uh, or Bitcoin needs to rally up, then Ethereum needs to follow and then altcoins start to step in and Chainlink is one of the first ones as CCIP is coming around. If you're looking at Chainlink against Ether, it is back into the range of support of the range low, which means that we are currently getting into a significant investment thesis, which means that the valuation is super low for Chainlink against Ether and could be as a result drive even further adoption in terms of investment thesis here. What we're looking at, I think we want to create a higher low and then we can start rallying. A rally of 40 to 50% is relatively normal here. Curve against Ether, another one. We are just looking at a case where we are consolidating here and looking for a higher low or support test. DeFi is finding itself into a little bit more uh, difficult stages because of Gary Gensler and the crackdowns that we're seeing all across. But overall, you can argument that the altcoins are into support ranges and you clearly against Bitcoin and against Ether don't want to sell the position. So that's my thesis for now. I'm sticking to the long positions um, and I've been rebuying into the few of those. And I guess we can just say altcoin portfolio challenge from 850 bucks to 10k if you want to stay tuned on everything that i do when it comes to the altcoin portfolio make sure to join my discord where i post real-time updates all the way from the level that we are right now targeting 10k for this year make sure to join the public discord where you can also connect with other traders ask me questions and more if you want to stay tuned make sure to subscribe to this youtube channel as on tuesday we're going to do another bitcoin update and there's lots of things that are going to happen in the next few weeks on thursday make sure to also check out the macroeconomic update i'll see you again soon ciao